Star Wars has more than its fair share of iconic warships and the Galactic Republic in particular has several associated with it. But most of these vessels were Clone Wars era ships, meaning that while they were certainly iconic and played an important role, they only served the Republic for three years. The vessel we're going to be talking about today served the Republic for over 3,000 years and it was in no small part responsible for saving the Republic several times over. This vessel is the Hammerhead class cruiser and in this video we're going to be giving it the recognition it deserves. Attention sergeant on deck! The Hammerhead class cruiser was a product of Rendili Hyperworks, one of the core world's finest shipbuilding firms. At roughly 315 meters long, it was much smaller than most Clone Wars era warships, but it was a respectable size for its time. Aside from its large distinctive forward section, it was a rather slim vessel, but for its size, it packed quite a bit of firepower and had plenty of interior space. A crew of 300 was required to operate the vessel, or one Sith Lord as Darth Sion demonstrated, and it could carry up to 400 passengers, plus 4,000 tons of cargo, two shuttles, and a wing of 12 Auric class tactical strike fighters. In terms of weaponry, the Hammerhead featured two medium dual turbo laser batteries, four light turbo laser batteries, a tractor beam array, and a comprehensive system of point defense laser cannons. The turbo lasers were mostly clustered on the large head of the warship, while the point defense cannons ran in strips along the sides of the vessel. The hammerhead could take quite a bit of punishment and it could give as good as it got too. The cruisers featured powerful engines and shields, both of which were hallmarks of Rendili design, and if either failed, they also featured several layers of armor plating, which was designed to prevent catastrophic hull breaches. They were incredibly durable vessels, and they could take lengthy barrages with shields down and manage to avoid major hull breaches. One ship, the Endar Spire, was able to take a pummeling from a Sith fleet without any of its major compartments being breached, right up to the point where it was vaporized. The ship was designed so that if a vessel was damaged beyond repair, the interior would remain functionally intact for as long as possible to allow the crew to escape. While the weapons array for these ships might not seem like much, they packed quite a punch. The primary weapons of Hammerhead class cruisers were a mix of light and medium turbo lasers, and while these weren't as powerful as heavier models, they were capable of firing much faster. If all of the forward guns on a Hammerhead were trained on the same target, they could deal as much damage as an array of heavy turbo lasers, and they were still capable of a greater degree of precision as well. The point defense systems on these vessels left the hammerheads with no major blind spots, though sufficiently large swarms of starfighters could easily overwhelm them. The hammerhead was designed around 4,000 years before the Battle of Yavin, and a handful of experimental models saw use in the Great Sith War, particularly during the Battle of Koros Major. They proved wildly successful, and as the Republic completely overhauled its military in the wake of the conflict, the Hammerhead became one of the primary vessels of the Republic Navy. So many were ordered by the Republic that it was estimated over the course of decades, Rendili put out a new one every 10 days. As the Mandalorians, under the rule of Mandalore the Ultimate, set their sights on the Republic, the Republic stepped up its shipbuilding, adding hundreds of new Hammerheads to its fleet. They also implemented new, inexpungible class command ships, three kilometer long warships that were themselves intended to sell more hammerheads, as each command ship could coordinate up to 64 of the smaller cruisers. This cemented the hammerheads place as the backbone of the Republic Navy, and all of the smaller ships used by the Republic during that time were variants based on its design. Unfortunately for the Republic, few of those warships were suitable for the type of war the Republic attempted to wage against the Mandalorians. Republic Navy commanders attempted to use their swarms of hammerheads for overwhelming force attacks, which typically failed against the Mandalorians and their heavier weaponry. Thousands of hammerheads were destroyed due to poor usage in the Mandalorian Wars, and it wasn't until Revan and Malak took charge and new warships came into play that the Mandalorian Wars turned in the Republic's favor. During the last years of the Mandalorian Wars, as Revan and Malak began their counteroffensive, 
two new vessels entered use in the Republic Navy, the Interdictor-class cruiser, which was twice as large as the Hammerhead and was capable of ripping ships out of hyperspace, and the Centurion-class battlecruiser, which replaced the Inexpungible class as the Republic's primary command vessel. These two ships came to make up the bulk of Revan's fleet, and Hammerheads fell into support roles. Most of this fleet was destroyed during the Battle of Malachor V, but due to the tremendous successes of these vessels, especially the Interdictors, the Republic began mass-producing them after the end of the Mandalorian Wars, planning to replace the Hammerheads with their larger cousins. But these plans were dashed when Revan and Malak returned to Republic space as self-declared Dark Lords of a new Sith Empire, sparking the Jedi Civil War. Their first attack was against the Republic shipyards on Forost, where most of the new Interdictors were being produced. Exploiting the element of surprise and the loyalty much of the Republic Navy still owed them, Revan and Malik practically stole the whole fleet, and so the Interdictor became their primary warship during the Jedi Civil War. In desperation, the Republic Navy once more took the Hammerhead-class cruiser as its primary warship class, and this time they altered their tactics to account for the vessel's capabilities. Instead of trying to match Revan's tactics or default to the tactics used earlier in the Mandalorian Wars, the Republic divided its navy into small fleets of hammerheads and smaller foray class blockade runners, using the advantages of their smaller cruisers against the Sith. One of the biggest assets of the hammerhead class cruiser was its maneuverability, speed and durability, and only through exploiting these factors was the Republic able to survive the onslaught that was the Jedi Civil War. While Revan used his cruisers more as battleships, the Republic Navy started sending out small groups of hammerheads to perform hit and run attacks, disorienting Sith fleets enough for larger Republic battle groups and Bastila Shan's battle meditation to finish them off. During the Jedi Civil War and the Dark Wars that followed, the Hammerhead class cruiser was indispensable in ensuring the continued survival of the Republic. Their speed and maneuverability made them surprisingly effective against Sith interdictors, and large fleets of them using evasive tactics could successfully outmaneuver and blast their way through forces of much larger warships. Their cheapness meant that the Republic could produce large numbers of them without further crushing its economy. This made them an instrumental part of the eventual Republic victory in the Dark Wars as well. Indeed, without hammerheads patrolling the space lanes following the end of the Jedi Civil War, the Republic might have collapsed from internal turmoil even without the Sith. In a sense, the Hammerhead could be seen as the Republic's answer to the stateless strategy, a classic dilemma that pretty much all of the Republic's enemies exploited over the course of its long history. That dilemma was simple. It was impossible to control all of space, which meant it was pretty much impossible for a faction that didn't have core territory in need of protection to be wiped out, as fleets could just hide in the middle of nowhere until it was time to strike. A centralized state under attack from such a faction had a choice of evils. They could attempt to comb the void while leaving the core territories vulnerable, or they could defend those core territories and allow their enemies to grow stronger. The Republic was obviously never able to take advantage of the stateless strategy, but the Hammerhead class cruiser allowed it to do the next best thing. Small fleets of the vessels were able to operate statelessly against invading Sith forces, simultaneously defending the Republic's core territories while also being impossible for the Sith to pin down and destroy. By all rights, the Republic should not have survived the Jedi Civil War, and it shouldn't have survived the Dark Wars either. But it survived both of them, in no small part due to these formidable warships. They saved the Republic again and again, ultimately breaking the back of the Sith Empire at Rakata Prime and finishing off its remnants at Telos IV. Following the end of the Dark Wars, the Hammerhead influenced Republic naval shipbuilding for millennia to come. Though the Republic did go back to building larger warships as well, it made good use of smaller cruisers and frigates for the rest of the old Sith Wars and even during the new Sith Wars. During the Republic Golden Age, 3000 years later, the Hammerhead-class cruiser was still a major influence over the types of ships used by the Republic Judicial Forces. Only in the lead-up to the Clone Wars was the lesson of the Hammerheads forgotten somewhat, as the ships commissioned for the New Republic Navy were almost all descendants of the Interdictor class and the Centurion class, the vessels the Republic used in the Mandalorian Wars. These tactics were brought back into use by the Rebel Alliance, however, which, like the Old Republic, was forced to rely on smaller ships and it continued to prefer such vessels even when it became the New Republic. 
As for the Hammerhead itself, it remained in service long after the Dark Wars. Alongside other, similar vessels, they were still the backbone of the Republic Navy 300 years later, during the Great Galactic War and several subsequent conflicts, which marked the end of the old Sith Wars. Larger capital ships, like the Invincible-class dreadnought heavy cruiser, came into play over the course of the centuries that followed, but when the new Sith Wars broke out in 2000 BBY, these 2,000-year-old vessels once more took the lead, albeit with plenty of retrofitting. They remained the mainstay of the Republic Navy through the entirety of that millennium-long conflict, as they were optimal for countering the disorganized hit-and-fade tactics of the new Sith. Only after the end of the new Sith Wars was the Hammerhead retired, 3,000 years after its debut, along with the rest of the Republic Navy. Even then, some continued to serve in the planetary security forces of poorer sectors even up to the time of the Clone Wars, making this a truly long-lived warship. For comparison, the Venator-class Star Destroyer only lasted 8 years as a mainline warship, which is 0.003% of the mainline lifespan of the Hammerhead. So that was the story of the Hammerhead-class cruiser, the legendary warship that pretty much saved the Republic. But what do you think? Are there other warships you'd like to hear us take a deep look at like this one? Let us know in the comments section below and let us know which ship you'd like to hear about next. And you guys know the drill. If you haven't yet joined our wider community, make sure you check us out on our main Discord server where you can chat to myself and other Star Wars fans, participate in heaps of competitions, give video suggestions, do a whole bunch of stuff. And if you're more of a gamer, make sure you join our Gary's Mod where you can play Star Wars roleplay with obviously other Star Wars fans. Anyways guys, as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.